Hey there, it's Ben Schrahammer, urologist here at the University of Pennsylvania. This video will go over the diagnosis, workup, management, overview of men who have been diagnosed with an elevated PSA. If you've been diagnosed with an elevated PSA and you plan to see myself or just a different urologist in your local community, hopefully this guide will help you uh, just with the general information about what it is, will help you with pertinent questions to ask and uh, will ideally take away some of the anxiety you may be feeling at this point. I think first thing to know is what is the PSA and what is your prostate? So the prostate is a gland that sits between your bladder and your urethra. And what it actually does is it actually helps facilitate semen and sperm so that you can have kids. So your vas deferens plugs into the back of the prostate your seminal vesicles plug into the back of the prostate as well. And as you go to ejaculate, it helps coordinate the sperm with the semen so that you can have ejaculate so you can have children. So the prostate really is a, is a reproductive organ. Now, the urine, urine from your bladder also just so happens to go through the, the middle of the prostate. And so it joins the urinary tract uh, you know, with your reproductive tract. And uh, that's where the, the two sides come together. And so PSA is an enzyme that is made mostly uh, in the prostate and is stored in the seminal vesicles. And as your PSA number goes higher, there's a few different causes for that. And so PSA, it's called, stands for prostate-specific antigen. It's a protein that's made by the cells in the prostate gland. It's typically found in the semen, but small amounts of the PSA molecule can actually get out into your bloodstream and the elevated PSA signal can signal that there are some changes going on inside the prostate. And so our goal with PSA screening is to detect those early changes going on inside the prostate with the idea that an early detection can reduce the risk of metastases from prostate cancer ideally improve treatment options. And, you know, we have evidence that, that screening uh, does save lives, but not everyone benefits from a screening program equally. So who should get screened? The general recommendation is that men between the ages of 55 to 69 years old should be the ones that get screened. Now, screening is good for the entire population. Your individual risk may be a little bit different you may have a family history. Uh, you may be an African-American male. You may have a history of genetic mutations that portend to a higher prostate cancer risk. Uh, for example, the BRCA or Burkin mutation. So for men like uh, yourself, if you have any of those risk factors, we would recommend that you start screening at the age of 45. We typically recommend that we stop screening around the age of 70 to 75. And the reason for that is because over a certain age, given the general slow growing nature of prostate cancer, we find that there's not a lot of benefit to it. And the, the workup can actually pose more risks than possible benefit to prostate cancer screening. And while it's impossible for anyone to estimate if, you know, the life expectancy of yourself or your loved one is not 10 years or more, uh, we find that prostate cancer screening is, is not helpful, uh, again, because the, the workup for it can actually cause uh, more problems than, than any sort of uh, benefit with um, diagnosis. There have been two very large scale PSA screening trials that were done. One trial called the ERSPC trial was completed in Europe. The PLCO trial was completed here in the United States. The overall synopsis of the two trials is that it's very hard to do a lab test trial in a population because a lot of different people will either choose to or choose not to get the lab test and it's really impossible to control who gets what and how they benefit. However, the ERSPC trial, which was the European trial, did show that if men underwent PSA screening, there was a reduction in the amount of metastatic disease found in those men in that population. 
the American trial, the PLCO trial, much more difficult to sort of parse through those results because there is a lot of what we call crossover in the two arms. So meaning men that got PSA screening and men that were not supposed to, a lot of the men that were sort of not set up for the PSA screening um, groups ended up getting it anyways and then ended up sort of getting treatment um, as it was seen fit. And so um, as urologists, we feel as though, uh, or we know that uh, PSA screening does save lives. We know that um, it does in, um, indeed reduce the risk of metastatic disease. And, um, and when done uh, correctly and accurately, um, can really um, be an, an overall benefit. So to go back to the workup, if you have an elevated PSA or prostate-specific antigen test, this does not mean that you have prostate cancer. So an elevated PSA test is not a one-to-one -one correlation with prostate cancer. So a high test does not mean that you have prostate cancer. There's a lot of other causes for the disease or for the PSA number to rise. BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia would be the most common cause. Men with larger prostates, say above 60 grams, 70 grams, 80 grams, will actually have a higher PSA number. And that's just because more PSA is being made by the prostate just based on the size. And so we'll look at things like PSA density if you have a large prostate. Uh, prostatitis or inflammation or infection, UTI, things like that are very common causes of an elevated PSA. It's not uncommon for a potential primary care doctor to get a PSA when a patient is having symptoms. We'll see that PSA jump up to 15, 20, 30, and we'll come right back down once those symptoms are resolved. And so if you're having a large prostate, had a recent um, recent infection, those would be really good reasons that your PSA would be elevated. Recent activity, um, you know, your prostate sits there, you know, right above the rectum. Recent activity like ejaculation, bike riding, exercise, strenuous uh, activities can absolutely cause a transient rise in that number. Recent biopsy can do that as well. And so, uh, again, lots of common causes for that, that PSA number rise because what it is is it's the being made inside the prostate and then that what we're picking up on the blood test is what actually leaks outside the prostate into your bloodstream. So anything that would cause a little bit of transient trauma to the prostate area can absolutely lead to this. And then there's other age-related factors and, and for some people you just have a high PSA number and that's just how you were made. And as long as we kind of go through the workup and find that there's nothing bad causing that, you know, that's just, that's just how you were made. You know, the PSA number in general, it's not a cholesterol test. It's not your A1C for diabetes per se. So we don't, it's not a number that we have to treat and bring down. Our goal is just to make sure that it is not being caused, um, the rise is not being caused by cancer. So again, we do not treat the PSA number. We do not bring it down. We do not have diet, exercise, et cetera, to, to treat that number. Um, we just make sure that that number is not elevated due to, to prostate cancer specific reasons. Certainly, if you are interested in using diet and exercise to improve your overall health, we would absolutely recommend that you do that. Uh, but the, the tr to treat the PSA number would, would not be the main cause of that. Absolutely do it for your cardiovascular and pulmonary health. You know, absolutely do it for uh, diabetes prevention, etc. But uh, the PSA is not would not be a cause uh, for you to go through that. So here's my workup for you if you come to my clinic. So for one is we rule out those benign things that I just talked about. Did you have a recent infection, a recent inflammation, trauma, so on and so forth? Re oh, go over your recent activities and um, and just make sure that all of those things are are off the table. We'll look at your recent PSA results. If you have a one-time test, just one time ever, the easiest and first step is we just get a repeat just to make sure that that's still the case. So um, so if you get a one-time test of say 4.2, we'll repeat that. And there's a, a high likelihood or high possibility 
that that number will come down um, below that. And so it's a, it's a really kind of a transient test. In fact, if you get it tested you know, two times in the same day, you have two slightly different uh, variables. And so um, as long as you're sort of in the ballpark of where the first test was, then you know, the, we'll, we'll take that number for what it is. But um, the first thing that we'll do is that we'll get a repeat test. If that repeat test is high, meaning that you are above four, you're still above four, then we will look into getting the secondary test. The secondary test that we mostly use is called the multi-parametric MRI of the prostate. Multi-parametric MRI is um, it's a simple, straightforward uh, MRI scan, and it gives us a scoring system of what your prostate looks like. That scoring system is one to five. One and two are benign on the scoring system. Three, four, and five have increased um, possibility of being diagnosed um, with prostate cancer. So if there's a pyrides three, there's like a roughly 10% chance. Pyrides four would be about a 50% chance and pyrides five was, is a high likelihood. So based on the multiparametric MRI, we would then recommend or not recommend a biopsy based on that. There's some nuance to these tests and there's some nuance to these scenarios. For some men, given sort of the low likelihood of pyrides 3 being, you know, being cancerous, if you're at an increased age, sometimes we'll just opt to watch it because we know that it's a possible risk, but, you know, not, not overtly high like a pyrides 5 per se. And um, if you're unable to get a multiparametric MRI of the prostate, then we would consider other tests. Some of the tests that you may hear about would be like a 4K score, prostate health index, et cetera. There's a myriad of these different tests and different institutions tend to have slightly different tests for this. And so um, certainly it would be worthwhile asking with your local urologist to see if there was anything that they had to help risk stratify an elevated PSA um, beyond just the number. So our next actions would be based on your PSA, assuming that your repeat value is still elevated, we would then move on to the next step, which would be the risk stratification step. Typically, that's a multiparametric MRI of the prostate. And then if the multiparametric MRI of the prostate would say that there was a lesion there, we then typically recommend a, a biopsy. The biopsy process involves a transrectal ultrasound. So that's a retrosome that, ultrasound that goes into the rectum. And then a needle biopsy of the prostate. There's a few sort of different technical ways that this can be completed, but the overall synopsis of it is a ultrasound in the rectum and then a needle into the prostate to collect the, the tissue specimens. If there was a lesion on MRI, this part will of course be targeted. And then we generally will target areas around the rest of the prostate, what we call a systematic biopsy, just to make sure that there's nothing occurring anywhere else. If your MRI comes back and it indeed does not show any lesions, more often than not, we'll just opt to watch it. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to monitor the PSA and just be grateful that there was you know, nothing specifically there on MRI. So key takeaways for PSA and PSA screening are not every PSA rise means that you have prostate cancer. In fact, it's more common than not that a PSA rises just due to benign causes. We absolutely recommend, typically speaking, getting a secondary risk stratification test, including a multiparametric MRI, a secondary lab test, a digital rectal exam, et cetera, just to help stratify the risk to see uh, if you would benefit from a prostate needle biopsy. We do not treat the PSA number as um, as, a, as a number that needs to be treated, but we will absolutely make sure to work it up to make sure that it is not the cause of a possible prostate cancer. And um, we are absolutely happy to you know, walk this process through with you. So thanks so much for joining on today. I really appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you if you're coming to my clinic soon. Thanks.